What's up, y'all? I hope all is well with y'all today. Um, you guys, we have a lot to unpack today, and I hope I don't get like emotional and stuff. But it's actually a sad, you know, situation for our community. But there is a spiritual attack on our community. And yesterday I posted a video um, that I actually have recorded almost, well, it was like a year and a half ago at this point, because it was November 2022 when I recorded that video. Um, you know, because me going on my spiritual journey, when God moved me away from Maryland to Texas, you know, he told me to go. Um, I didn't understand exactly what I was going to have to go through when I went into my wilderness season. And I'm telling you, in this season, I have had to unpack so, so, so much stuff that I never knew I was dealing with. And this is something that we have to do to truly prosper and to truly walk into full alignment with God's will to truly reap the harvest and fulfill the and feel the fullness of the blessings that he has for us as his chosen people. Us as the black sheep, we're his chosen ones, but the black community as a whole, we are his chosen people. We are the real Hebrew Israelites. We are the people of this book. We are the biblical Israelites. We are the descendants of them. America is our promised land. It's our land flowing of milk and honey. And in this land, we're not prospering fully in this land. And we keep asking for reparations and all of this and all of that. And we won't get it because we still is not serving the one God, our God. We serve in different gods. The habitual idolatry that got us into this curse is the same idolatry that we continue to do. And it's hindering us as a collective. And because we don't have our covering from God, we're not, it's, it's a mess. When I just sit back and see it from the spiritual aspect, I mean, like you have to understand that what's going on is a spiritual battle. That's why it does not matter how much therapy, how much everybody get on these podcasts, talking this and that, until people learn that this is a spiritual thing, until people awaken to spirituality, until people learn that we are mere spiritual beings just operating in these physical bodies, they, we won't understand what, what this is really all about. We won't understand it. And the issue between the black man and the black woman is so deep, is so deep rooted, but we don't have no clue on that because we don't know who we are and we perish for a lack of knowledge because we don't read. We don't read our Bible for ourselves. Many of us don't even believe in the Bible anymore because of religion, because what religion has done using the Bible and using God's name. Many people have turned away from God. But my thing is, my stance on that is many people do you wrong and you don't turn away from them. If you feel if you turn it away from God because you feel like somebody else that's supposed to represent God did you wrong? That that's not a valid reason because you must understand that these people are not God. These people are vessels being used by God, and these people are operating in human bodies. They they're made of flesh, and no flesh is ever going to be perfect. It don't matter if you're being used by God or if you're not. You're not perfect, so you're going to be faulty. That's just a flat out fact. But if you have a relationship with the Most High yourself, you won't have to rely on mere humans for your guidance, for your comfort, for your safety, for your provision, for your protection. You won't be relying on mortals for that. And, you know, in my last video that I just dropped a uh, judgment on the women's judgment on the women's pride, it came from um, Isaiah page 771. It was Isaiah chapter three. Verses 16 through 24, and it was judgment for the women's pride. And God had led me to, I, I recorded that video back in November 2022. But um, what I've been going through like the past couple weeks and just revelation that God has been giving me throughout my journey and especially more, you know, recently um, when it comes to my own relationship with men and more specifically with my second baby dad. Um, the revelation that he's been giving me is just, it, it, it. he led me to post that video that I have been recorded. But because of pride, I was not about to put that out. Um, and it just wasn't the time, I think. And that's why now he led me to go ahead and drop it because I had to get clear on some things. And there is still some things that I'm not all the way um, clear on, which is, like I say, you guys, that's why... 
when you need clarity on stuff, you you need to go into fasted states. You have to fast for some of the revelation that you need. Fasting and prayer together is going to release a lot of information to you. And when you seek God wholly with your whole heart and you really want to unpack some things and you really want to know, you know, who you are, why you're here, what you're called to do, why this, why that, you have to call on the Lord. Like it says in um Jeremiah, let's see if I can flip to it right quick. I think it's Jeremiah 33, 3 or 33 or 333, one of them. Um, yes, Jeremiah 333. So number 333. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. It says, call to me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which you know is not. Basically, it's saying, call on him to know the things that you that you don't know. If you want to know certain things, you must call on the Lord. But the thing is, a lot of our men and our women, I'm, I'm telling you, it has taken for me to get this relationship with God, to build up my relationship with God, to realize a lot. Because... I didn't have a father that disciplined me. So a lot of things when it comes, especially when it comes to men. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of misandry and misogyny going on out here within our community. It's so much strife between the man, the black man and the black woman. And that's nothing but a spiritual attack. You, you know that it's a spiritual attack because it just like, it don't even really make sense on how two people can be going so hard against each other when really we want to be together but it's like a force that's keeping us apart that's how you know it's a spiritual attack when you want something really bad but you you not getting it that is a spiritual force that is affecting that and my relationship with my second bd is what made me realize it's a we both understand that it's a spiritual attack on our union and a lot of times when there's a spiritual attack on you as a singular, you know, as a single person or in a union is because the enemy knows that when you two come together or when you truly come into, um, you know, fulfilling your purpose, because even as a single person, like you will have a lot of spiritual warfare because where God, what, what your destiny is, where God is calling you to the higher heights that he's calling you to, you're going to ultimately upset the kingdom of darkness because more than likely, you're going to be exposing some things of the kingdom of darkness as the chosen one. Y'all know our job as the chosen ones is to expose the darkness um, and to reveal truth. We are the truth tellers. But when it comes to the union, when God knows, I mean, when the enemy knows that you two are going to come together to produce greatness and to especially expose a lot of wickedness and to bring people into alignment with with who they really are called to be because the whole agenda of the world of your gov officials they don't want people to really truly awaken they don't because when you awaken you're going to realize who the enemy is you're going to realize what you really have been dealing with you're going to realize what we're really facing out here you're going to realize the real world that we're living in you're going to really realize what's really going on and that's what they don't want you to do they want you to stay sweet which is why they contaminate the food, which is why they put all this fluoride and everything to keep you from awakening, to keep your spiritual eyes from never opening. Some call it the third eye, which ultimately we do have this. People don't people like to, you know, crucify uh, those type of terms because they, you know, but it's religious folks that really do that. But we really do have a third eye. It's really the way the body is 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 constructed. It we have that, and until that opens. Until you get that awakening, you're not going to see things for what it really is. And you're going to keep getting finessed out here by them higher ups. Because we know we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in higher places. We're, based, we're facing spiritual wickedness in higher places. And these spiritual beings that are operating in the dark force, they are inside of human bodies operating they are in our government they're in the fda the cdc they're in these positions they're in high places in high um in high positions within the hierarchy of who runs this this earth on the earthly realm and it's re it, they're poisoning 
mankind. And this is why, truthfully, you know, we have to be, it, it's like, I can't truly be too careful on what I say, but I know you're supposed to, you know, you got to kind of be careful what you saying out here. And they even know that the 144,000 are chosen in the, in the book of Revelation, they know that these chosen beings, these chosen ones have the ability to awaken folk and give them knowledge that they don't want them to know. What they would deem is forbidden knowledge, but God needs his people to know these things. We have been shielded from knowing the truth about who we are for so long. And if you understand when somebody wants to hide something from you so much, it's a reason for that. It's because they don't want you to know who you truly are. They don't, they don't really want you to know the real because when you know the real, you're going to come against them. You're going to affect their plan that they have. And that's not what they want. And we must understand that the attack that's on us and that, you know, God actually allows it to go on because we, we won't submit to him. We won't come to him. We don't have covering by him. And when you're out here as a spirit, we're just spirits in these bodies that need spiritual covering. It's more than just having mere mortals because mere mortal human beings are lost. We know it's, we know nothing. We know nothing. We don't know half as much as we think we do because we don't even truly know who you are. So when you don't know who you are, there's only so much that it's only so far you can go. And it's only so much that you can teach to another person when you don't even know who you are. And you're going to be teaching things from a mortal perspective from a carnal mind because you don't have that spiritual understanding you don't have that wisdom that only the most high provide god provides wisdom he gives you that type of information and we're not covered in our our men the men out here they don't they think because they were made in god's image that they are gods and that they don't need no covering Everyone must have covering. There's always a, a chain of command. You're always a subordinate of someone higher than you. Adam was a subordinate of a, a being higher than him. He was the first man on earth, but it doesn't mean that he didn't have nobody that was over top of him that he has to submit to. And that's what I'm going to read right here in um, Isaiah right quick. Um because it says, woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. When you don't have God covering you, you're going to be lost. When you have uh, any spirit, because it says, they take counsel, but not of me. And many of our men out here, they're taking counsel from other lost men. That has no covering from God. If you are not, everybody has to have a covering. And that's what I'm going to get into with the women. So we're going to, we're going to talk about this video probably won't end up getting long. Um, but we're going to talk about the men and the women. Um, because it, it really go deep. And until you truly, until you truly understand and, and get to the root, there's no way you can fix things. These podcasts that sit around talking about things from a carnal mind and from, you know, it's like we're not going to get no solutions seeing all the bickering when I be seeing some of the, the 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 comments sometimes or if I see like a video on Instagram and see this stuff I just be like this is pathetic to see in the comments how it's the men and the women going at black men and black women really going at each other because nobody wants to take accountability it is both of our faults God is angry at the black man and the black woman because we are both his we're both his but black men, he is really angry with y'all because y'all don't seek him. And then it be these same people. I see it in the comments. It be these dudes. And so it don't be my comments, but I'll see it in other comments. And it was the a guy, a couple guys have said this, that uh, a woman not supposed to be preaching. A woman not supposed to be doing this. Y'all keep saying what a woman not supposed to be doing. But y'all that God called here to be the leaders. This is in Samuel. This is what I'm saying. Until you start reading your Bible, baby, shut up. You cannot give no advice. If you don't have spiritual understanding from your Bible, shut up. You cannot speak. 
Y'all did not want to leave. Y'all still don't want to leave. Y'all won't answer the call. Look how many of our black men are, are called to be prophets amongst the nations like Jeremiah, like Isaiah, like many of us women. But I see so many women stepping into prophecy. The men don't want to leave. You don't want to teach. So God, God's will must be done. It don't matter who he has to use. His will must be done. So if he's, put, if he's urging his sons, the sons of men that he made in his image, if he's telling y'all, he's urging y'all to get up and answer the call in your life, to get up and do what I told you to do, to get up and have the demand and authority that I called you here to have, and you're not doing it, he got to use somebody. He's going to use the women. I'm not supposed to be doing this. There's no reason I really should be doing this. There's no reason that I should be having to be responsible for reading all of this book, for breaking it down, for all the... I, this is he was talking to men in this book. He was not talking to a woman. His word was to men and men to men. The Israelites were led by men. He was talking to all the sons of Jacob, all the men. He was never talking to women in here. He was never talking to women. But y'all won't step up and lead. Black men have a true issue with leadership, with proper leadership. And then you wonder why the white man has to lead and the white man when the white man has to lead because the white men are willing to lead. They're willing to lead. I just observe it everywhere in the world. I'm like, dang, where do, where's our men at? Like, I just be like, where are y'all at? Where, in, where are they at in the world? When I'm out here just observing as I watch them just build the world. And even with that thing that just happened with the bridge in Baltimore and I see who out there on the site cleaning, like who getting it? I'm like, it's always white men. Like, where do where do my men be at? Where do we be at when it comes to the the world? Where where are our men at? Even on YouTube, you know, I do see a couple guys that's up here, you know, doing their prophecies and stuff. But God called men to lead, to lead over the women. But y'all are not doing that. This is the reason. We in this situation now in the book of Samuel. When they was saying, y'all kept wanting a king because you don't want you don't want to take direct leadership from God. Why not take direct leadership from God? Why not get into your quiet space and take take direction from God? Why are you looking on YouTube? Why are you looking to to people in the world that's just like you, mere flesh? Why are you looking to them for leadership when you can you? You have the, the, the blessing of the most high spirit, the most high God to cover you fully, to lead you fully. I mean, I'm experiencing it myself because people don't like, they feel like God too hard. And I too, be feeling like God, you too hard on me. Like you, you too hard on me sometimes, but I know it's pruning. It's pruning. It's really getting me to where I need to be. It's stripping me, but stripping me from all the, the negative flaws, the, the character flaws that I have. It's stripping me and giving me true understanding. And, you know, that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. It's like when you feel like you above reproach and nobody can talk to you, nobody can correct you, nobody can discipline you. Oh, I just got all this free will. We be having free will and you choose to do wrong things with your free will. And then when you fall and bust your butt because of your free will, you looking to point the finger at everybody else instead of going within. And that's a couple things. Two, when you vow a vow, you when you under, when you have no covering, you're responsible for your own self. You you have no covering. You're not covered by God. You're not covered by your husband. You're not covered by you have no covering. A woman is supposed to be covered by her husband and a man is supposed to be covered by God. When you don't have no covering, that's why the devil come in and eat you alive. You're not covered by nothing. You're not protected by the kingdom of heaven's powers. So now you free game, you bait for the kingdom of darkness to come eat you up. And that's exactly what he be doing. The kingdom of darkness be eating our community up, eating us up. The men and the women just looking at it out here. It's just, it's a mess. It's a complete lack of covering, lack of discipline. And it's just wild. It's corrupt. And this is exactly why judgment day is coming upon the land. This is exactly why it's a mess out here. There's no structure. There's no order in the black community. And we don't know how to 
come together in a healthy manner because we don't understand truth, accountability, responsibility. We don't understand. We don't want to take accountability. We don't want, want to be responsible for why we in this mess. We rather point the blank, point the finger. Oh, the white man did this. Oh, the government. Oh, my mama. Oh, my daddy. Even though it's some truth to all of it. But until you take your own power back, and the only way you can truly take your power back is when you get to know God, get to know who he created you to be. Stop looking for validation and trying to fit in and do what other nations are doing because that's what got this community into this mess that we're in. You looking at other nations, you letting this portal, this gate here deceive you. We let it deceive us. Like from the beginning of time, Eve let this deceive her. And you see what these other nations are doing and you want to be like these other nations, but you're set apart. Even us as the chosen ones, as the black sheep, we be like, why do everybody else, or why everybody else get to do this? You know, why, why they get to do this? And they, they say that they Christian, they say that they this religion, or they say that they believers, they say, but they get to do this. And I don't, and, and I get convicted so heavy for that. I can't do this, but they can do this, but they, they say your name and then they saying that you giving them these blessings and stuff, but yet I'm going through this long journey. I'm going through all of this and they get to do that. And God be like, you're not them. You're, you're truly mine. You're truly mine. I don't know who blessing them folk. Cause that ain't me. That's another deity that's blessing them. And after I saw this video, yes, the other day about Christian witches, I said, cause they really be serving multiple gods. You cannot have two ma two masters. You cannot serve two gods. There's not like, there's only one true, true God. So when you serving all these other gods, idolatry, this world, it's just, and I'm listening to the, the, the one that say this. I'm like, they, so they say that they pray to the creator and then they also pray to this God and that God and that God because they all have their different powers, you know, and which is true because God gave authority to everything, every celestial object, the sun, the moon, the there, 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 there's just stars. Everything does have a power. Everything, because everything has a responsibility. Everything has, uh, but God, the creator gave all these things its power. And you're supposed to be worshiping the creator who gave all these lower beings, these lower deities, their powers. But when I saw that, I'm like, child, and y'all wonder why I will never say, I'm not, I'm not putting myself into none of those categories. I'm not saying I'm Christian. I'm not, because I'm not. If this, if this is what go on in this stuff and it's so corrupt in these religions, because instead of speaking truth, each religion and each denomination got their own thing like to, to push narratives in their own ways. This is exactly why God keeps reminding me, you're set apart, you're different. And that's what he needs the whole black community to understand. We're different. We were never supposed to be trying to be like the nations. We were never supposed to be trying to be like white folk. We were never supposed to be trying to be like the Gentiles. You were, you were specially selected. He chose you. You're holy to him. And when you're holy to him, you can't do things that defile you like they do. Taking on their practices, which is why they're defiled. But because we wanted to be like them, okay, I'm going to give you over to them. You want this so bad? All right, I'm going to give you over to them. And now look at us. Wanting to be like these other, we're corrupt. We're broken. We're divided. We don't have no covering. No covering. Which is why we're vulnerable. Why there's so many lost souls out here. Don't know where you coming and going. If you don't know your purpose in life and you're not walking in your purpose, you're not working in your purpose, you are lost. If you're doing anything in life just for money, you are lost. You are serving two masters. You cannot serve the God, Mammon, who is the promiser of wealth, who is the God over money, the God that will get you to doing anything for money. It's you're serving a different master. You got to know who you serve. And when you serve God, when you serve the most high God, I am that I am. When you serve him, 
He is your provider. He is your protector. He is your savior. He is your redeemer. He is all of that. I'm just living it. I'm experiencing it. I can't speak for nobody else. But when you fully submit to God, the most high God, you understand what full, what it, what you understand what it's like to have true coverage. You, you, you feel the covering on you. And if you don't feel protected, if you feel like you alone, it's because you're not, you, you must not be under coverage. Like you're not fully submitting to God's will for your life. You're not, we're, we're not, we're, it's just, it's a mess out here. We're not fully understanding how blessed we are that God has chosen our people. He has chosen us and we have greatness that is promise for us that's stored up in the heavens for us but it will not be released because we are continuing to do things that is not acceptable and not pleasing to him and oh, i'm gonna read i'm gonna read this because this is exactly what we're talking about isaiah chapter 30 y'all make sure y'all read this on your own time um, it's like he, he just, he's so disappointed in us. He is so disappointed, you know, and before I, I, I really, let me, let me just read it because it's just, it's just pathetic how, how messed up it is. And we wonder why our relationships won't function properly. It's because God is not going to allow it to until we put him first and stop idolizing one another because we were never supposed to idolize men and men were never supposed to idolize women. And that's not, he gave us here to, for each other to be a benefit, to help, to produce his will, to make his visions reality, for us to carry out his plans. It has nothing to do really with us. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's just really sad, you guys. And this is just something that I too have had to learn in this season that the things that God is not pleased with me about the things that I needed to change, the things that I need to, to get rid of that is hindering me. And like I told y'all, especially as the chosen ones, things that hinder our anointing, things that prevent you from being able to truly walk out in the, your calling, to truly be able to answer the call and truly fulfill it in the utmost way. And when he's taking you through that pruning season, he's teaching you a lot about yourself. He's teaching you things that you did not know, like we just read with Jeremiah in Jeremiah 33. He's teaching you things that you did not know. He's giving you a new confidence. He's giving you, he's cleaning you up to position you for the the new position that he has called for you, which for many of us is to be prophets and speak and not just speak to get um, recognition, vain recognition and trying to, you know, just hoard in and foster in these, any type of attention and, and fame and notoriety. No, it's to speak truth. It's to be truthful about what's going on. It's to use your voice for the right reason, not just pandering like, Everybody seems to do online. They pander to one group so they can get foster in followers and foster in the dollars. The, the, the motives behind what we do is what God is judging. God weighs the motives, up, the motives of the heart. He is weighing the motives of your heart. So if you go into anything and your intentions about why you're doing that thing is not pure, is not genuine, you will surely pay for that. You will surely pay for that, you know? And this is what it's talking about in Isaiah 30. I got a lot to really unpack because we got to understand the importance of understanding that God is truly our father. And this is the, I'm gonna get to that in a minute because this is something that I've even had to learn within my own um, relationship about fathering because when you don't have a father which many of us in the black community don't have fathers or we don't have fathers who truly teach us the real because we have fathers that are not covered 
So they're not teaching you from a spiritual aspect. They're not teaching you from a, a aspect that really is for your best good. They think that they're teaching you for, for your greater good, but they don't know because they're lost themselves. They're ignorant. And we perish for a lack of knowledge. This community continues to perish for a lack of knowledge. And the one knowledge that we don't have is this spiritual understanding. We don't have that. And it's because we so busy listening to everybody else. We looking to your mom, you looking to your dad. But when you, when you look to these people, sometimes they have your, your best interest at heart. And sometimes they can give you some good sound advice. But a lot of times the spirit that's operating in, especially as the chosen ones, the black sheep who have narcissistic parents who allows the enemy to squat in them and wreak havoc on them and then wreak havoc on us, to shun us, taking advice from them is detrimental to your health, is detrimental to your relationships, is detrimental to your whole well-being when you listen to certain type of folk. That's why you can't listen to everybody. You have to make sure you're going to God yourself for instruction. And this is why I always tell y'all, develop a relationship with God for yourself. And if you don't know how to do that, that is what my book is for. My ebook, Seven Keys to the Kingdom, The Blueprint to Growing an Intimate Relationship with God, is in the link in the description box. It's going to give you all this information. It's going to go over how to have faith, how to repent. Because until you repent, you think that you can get away with doing all of the stuff that you have done and never repent for it. And you think you're going to have true coverage. You think you're going to truly be able to walk in the fullness that God has for you. You think you're going to really truly get to eat from the tree of life and you never repent for your wicked ways. And you never try to turn away from them or fully just turn away from them. Yes, God will give us grace and he has mercy on us. But when you are habitually doing the same things and you're not putting no effort in, God knows your heart. He knows what you're really feeling inside. He knows when you're genuine. He knows when you're really trying. He knows when you're trying to finesse him. He knows when you're trying to treat him like a genie. He knows. He is omnipotent. He knows everything. He knows everything. He is the all-knowing God. There's nothing that you cannot trick him like you could trick men, like you can trick women. You cannot do that with him and think that he doesn't know. He knows. He knows. And when he knows you're trying to play games, all right, you want to you wanna play games with the master, the one who created the game, the one who knows all the secrets to the game? You're playing a stupid game, and you're going to win a stupid prize every single time. And let me read this right quick. Um, I don't want to read all of it, but... It says, trust the Lord and not Egypt, because a lot of times we like to trust in what we thought we knew, what we learned from people who really didn't know things. And this is the problem, too, within our community. We have to unlearn so much. We have been taught nothing but lies in our education systems. We've been taught lies in our families. We've been taught lies in church. Y'all been taught lies. And that's why we're perishing for a lack of knowledge. Knowledge is truth. If you're not taught truth, then you're taught lies. And lies is why you're deceived. And lies and deception is why you're corrupt, is why the nation is corrupt, because of lies. You have to unlearn the lies. You have to learn truth. Truth is the only thing that's gonna set you free. And the Lord is the, is the spirit of truth is the spirit of truth because truth is the only thing that's going to set you free. Trying to hold on to lies, to feed your ego, to, so you can never have to deal with the, the, the real things that's truly hindering you. You're only doing yourself a disservice. You're going to wonder why you keep wandering around in your wilderness like the Israelites for years and years and years, why you can never have functioning, happy relationships. You're wandering around, and then, but you're deep down, you're, you're desiring these relationships or you're desiring, you know, whatever you're desiring and you wonder why it can never truly come to fruition is because you're not learning something. You haven't unpacked something. You're running. You're running from truth. And, you know, I'm going to get to that in a minute because this is what, this is what I had to learn. Everybody else trying to control me. Everybody else trying to tell me it took for the Lord. The Lord, like when you have an issue with me, you can't go to my earthly mother, my earthly father. You have to go to God about me because 
That's the only one that can really chastise me. That's the only one. That's the only one. And when you have an issue with anybody in the world, you wonder why people aren't hearing you? Because sometimes we don't hear the way we need to hear from mere mortals, and especially those that are closest to us, for whatever reason. And, and two, we won't get into that, a lack of trust with those that are closest to us. You know? Um, and which I'm going to be talking about. That's why this video actually might end up getting like two hours, um, honestly, because it's, it's real. It's, it's real issues that we're facing that is really affecting both the men and women in our community. The reason why we so divided and a kingdom divided cannot stand. A kingdom that's divided cannot stand, cannot have true authority, cannot take over. Cannot know it's, it. You won't know your worth. You won't be able to come together to even defeat the enemy. We divide it amongst ourselves. We're quarreling and, stri and have strife amongst ourselves. And we don't even know why. We, it's like we want something so bad, but we cannot get it. That's how you know it's a spiritual attack. And you're going to keep getting attacked until you know why you're being attacked. And until you face those issues head on. So let me read this to y'all because it says, trust the Lord, not Egypt. Um, Woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So when you take covering, when you get covering from anybody else other than God, that is sin to him. Disobedience is sin. So when he said in the Ten Commandments to put no gods before me, to serve no other gods, to... And you go serving other gods and you go looking for leadership and counsel from other gods and you want to make mere mortals your 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 covering, just like they did in the book of Samuel. Y'all had the most high God leading y'all, his spirit leading y'all, but because y'all can't really see his spirit, you wasn't really with it, and you wanted a, a, a being that you could see. So you wanted a king, because the other nations had kings, the other nations had rulers, and you don't even know what type of rulers they were. And because you wanted a king so bad. God told Samuel, okay, they want, they really want this king so bad. Let me, let me tell you what this king going to do to you. You want this king? Because when you want something so bad and you just don't care, you just, you just want it. I don't care what I got to deal with. I don't care what it's going to come with. You don't even read the fine print of that contract that you signing. And then when that, when they finesse you, then when they uh, oppress you, because you didn't read the fine print of what you were asking for and you were just so, so readily so easy to do it, quick to do it, and you didn't understand everything that it came along with. And this is what we do in our relationships. You get into stuff, you don't know what you're getting into. You did not read the fine print. And in these terms, you didn't pay attention to all those red flags, those patterns. You overlooked it because you were desperate. Look how many women you desperate for marriage. You see so many things before you even walk down an aisle. You see so many things before we had these men babies. We see so many things beforehand, but we just be like, ah, oh, ignore that. I mean, ignore the fine print. Red flags is the fine print. I'm going to ignore that. Men too. Y'all see so many, you see traits that she, she's a thought pocket. She for the streets. She had the spirit of Jezebel. She got the spirit of Delilah. She here to snake you. She here to only take from you. She here to find your strength and, and, and weaken you. She here to take you for everything you got. And because as much as people talk about Jezebel, that Delilah, many men have Delilahs, especially when they get up in status a bit. They only going to get Delilahs that's coming after them to, to ruin that empire that you build. That's why if you don't have the right person on your team and you go into contract, you marry with people, have children with certain kind of people, you are going to reap a bad harvest off of that bad investment that you made. You signing bad deals. You signing bad deals all because you didn't even inquire with the Lord before you did this thing. And if you did inquire with the Lord and he told you, no, you said, I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. So when you get what you get, you can't be mad at nobody but yourself. Because when a, oh, hold up, hold up, because that, that's another thing. When, a, when, when you vow a vow, that's what I'm saying. That's why y'all need to be in that book. Numbers chapter 30, before we even get to, the other one that I was about to read, Numbers chapter 30, because this is my plan anyway to, to talk about 
I got a couple things that we need to go over. It says, if a man vow a vow to the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he should not break his word. He should do according to all that proceeded out his mouth. So if you get, if you, if you vow a vow either to the Lord and you don't do what you say you're going to do, there's a, you're going to pay for that. It's a consequence. If you vow a vow, it says if you swear an oath to bind your soul with a bond, you come into agreement with whatever you come into agreement with. If you come into agreement with these wicked deities, these unclean spirits that might be operating into this beautiful woman's body. Or for us on a vice versa, you get with this rich man oh, because you was just hungry for a man that got riches and and fame and notoriety. And you eager for that and you don't know the spirit that's within that person that you're actually binding to. You're going to feel the aftermath of that. And when it's not pretty, you can't be mad because you came into agreement with that and you cannot break your word. You must be a man of your word. It says he shall not break his word. He shall do all to he should do according to all that proceeded out his mouth. And. Then we're going to go into the part with the women, because this is why women need covering, because we don't know. We're easily manipulated, which is why so many women out here get finessed, easily manipulated. These ears, like our ears and our eyes has, dece has deceived us from the beginning of time. The whole curse of humanity is because of Eve being deceived through her eye gates and her ear gates. You saw something that was beautiful. You heard manipulated words from the enemy and it caused curses to fall upon us generation after generation. It led to generational curses. It led to the tree of life being binded up. All the, the, the tools and the resources that come with the tree of life. The discernment. Reason why people don't have discernment out here, you don't know what's good, what's evil. You don't know. The, the reason you lost is because you're not eating from the tree of life. The reason why you don't have understanding, the reason you're not eating from the tree of life because it's locked up. It's locked up. And God is only going to give you those keys to the kingdom if he can trust you with those keys. If he see that you truly desire to be better by having his his protection if you truly want him you got to get the relationship with him for him to give you the keys which is once again why i say y'all need to get seven keys to the kingdom get my book link in the description seven keys to the kingdom and um i got some i'm, I'm actually working on the the physical hard copy now so i will have hard copies available by the end of the month um because i got a I'm, I'm working on that now and um, and some other stuff, too, because I know some people um, are not readers. I know most of my audience. I'm not going to say most of my audience, um, but my target audience, which is my community. We don't like to read. We don't like we, we prefer to listen. So I think I am going to see how I can like get it into um, like audible um, so that you can hear it and meditate on it and ultimately y'all need to read the word but to grow that relationship with god and to know how to hear from him to know the things that the the, the two main things that nobody want to talk about repentance and idolatry i go heavy into that in the book and so you can have understanding on some of the things that's preventing you from truly getting the, all the keys to the kingdom from truly being able to fill the fullness of god it's these things are preventing you from being able to do that you know, and like I was saying with women, we're not covered. And when the man is away, just like with, with, with Eve, he was only able to deceive her because her husband was not in sight. She was not covered. She was not covered. And now she's getting to go off of her own. Uh, the, the things that women do, feelings, going off of feelings, you know, how something looks. Oh, it looks good, you know. This is why it's a lot that I can really go into, but I was just telling this um, to somebody yesterday. This is why women are so money hungry 
because of our eyes. Y'all have to understand, just like it said in the Willie Lynch letter, reason why they preserve us back during slavery, why they why they favor the black woman, even though we get, you know, they look down on us too, but they're going to spare us. Why are they going to help us? Why are they willing to hurt our men even more, you know, by putting them on uh, child support, by, make, by making it extra hard for them and taking the money from them to give it to us, even though it is, you know, to take care of them kids and stuff. But y'all got to understand, women are good economics. Women make the world go round because women see with their eyes, because women, our eyes deceive us and we want everything we see. We like what's cute. We don't even be, we don't have real intentions of why we even buy stuff sometimes. You say, why you get that? It's cute. It ain't no reason other than that. I, it might not serve nothing. It might just be here to just sit here on a day. It's cute. I buy scissors. I buy stupid stuff sometimes just because it's cute. And this is why women, I had to explain this to my ex. I'm like, this is what men must understand. Women like things that are cute. And the world is it, it bombards us with things appealing to our eyes. Go into any store, go into any store. Who's in the store shopping? Who's in there shopping? Even when men are doing stuff, it's for women. They're not building houses just for themselves. They're building houses for the women because the women are the ones that's going to go inside and decorate the whole house. Women are the ones, men... Men don't even rarely live alone. Most men have never lived alone. We, though, we have lived alone. Men, most men, they're not doing buying houses unless they got a woman. They're not doing all of that stuff unless they got a woman. They go from one woman's house, their mama house, and then they go to live with another woman. And women make a house a home. So we so eager to for money because it buys us cute things. It's so many things that a woman can do, whether due to her own body, whether due for the house. There's so much that we use money for because of the things that we want, because we see things and we always looking on how we can amplify something, how we can make things more convenient for our family. So if we can buy this and it makes, it makes life more organized, we, we seek organiz organization and structure for our family. So we'll buy things to organize the bathroom to organize the kitchen to put the the um toilet paper here in this make it cute and organized to put q-tips in this little compartment cotton balls in this little compartment all of this we transfer we'll, we'll go <laughs> it's just the things that we do it's just like we just want to make things more pleasurable um more convenient we are we're designed to help we're our our partner's helpmate so we're designed to help them make life easier. We're supposed to come together to make life easier for one another. But in our community, we come together to make it harder for one another. And that's a problem. But women, we need coverage. We need coverage. And if you don't have that coverage, you're going to be lost out here. You're going to be easily manipulated. You're going to be very naive and very gullible and easily deceived by the enemy like Eve was because she her coverage was not around. And even though she knew better, it's like she didn't do better. Her discernment was all. Her discernment was all. Because that one word, she let Satan just, and that's how easy it is for a woman to be deceived. Because we are, we're, we're, we're very vulnerable beings. We're very emotional. We're very delicate. That's what my BD always say. Women are just delicate. You know, and I do like that about him. He understands how delicate a woman is. Um, and he he respects women. And I really do like that. There are some men who don't respect women at all, just like there's some women who don't respect men at all. And it plays out into our relationships um, because of where the, the, the root of that disrespect comes from, why there's a lack of respect there. Um, but back to what I was saying about the vows. Um, when you make a word, you must keep it. When you bind yourself to a person, you're going to get what comes with that. So you have to be careful about who you binding yourself to. You have to be careful about who you're coming into covenant with. And this is what we must understand. 
our first coverage is supposed to be from our fathers as men and women. It's supposed to be from our mother and our father. But it's the responsibility of the father to make sure his daughter is in line. And the reason why a lot of black women are out of line is because a lot of us don't have fathers. And that's what I wanted to get into um, because there, I, I see that for myself. I've never been disciplined by a, a man, like as far as a, a father, uncle, a grandfather, the, the men in my life have never disciplined me. My stepfather didn't discipline my dad didn't discipline. My mom was the disciplinary um, person, but even her, like, is that discipline wasn't really there like that. And even with my mom, hers was just uh, cussing you out, yelling. It wasn't until I got older, she tried to start saying things, you know, in a different way. But to the space that she was operating from when I was coming up, angry because of who you dealing with because of who you vow vows to and when women you get into these relationships with people that you shouldn't be in relationships with and they make you angry and and even before that because a lot of times it be stuff from childhood that many people don't unpack and it leads you into these certain type of relationships because of your low self-esteem and your low self-value you don't even feel like you're worthy of anything greater than what you what you're getting you don't believe in, in that and the things you accept be because of your low self-esteem and because of ultimately how you grew up. So when my mom, you know, if we would get into it or something and um, she would just send me to my dad's house. But my dad, like, and this wasn't often, but because I only, I could only count, I, I think it was like a handful of times that I actually been over my dad's house um, and it was only if she had to work an overnight shift or the the one time I remember when we got into it or something and she sent me over there and he, he never disciplined. He never disciplined. And he said, I guess to her that it's because he feel like he can't because he's not around. He don't be around like that. So he don't feel confident to discipline me. And I think one time he did try to, say something over the phone to me one time. Like he was, I remember, I think he was yelling at me or something about something. And that, I never had had that from him. So I'm like, I hung up on him. I do remember hanging up with him. Like, sir, you not even involved like that to, to be saying with anything you're saying. Just like when he told my mom, like I, I didn't know, but she, my mom, of course, the bone carrier, she want me to hear what my dad got to say. He's an arc too. And so is she. Um, you know, and when she's like, he said that, oh, she don't need to be, she don't need to be having another baby. She already struggling. Well, if I'm, you're my dad and you're just letting me struggle out here when as my dad, you're supposed to be my first coverage. I never had that coverage. And then my brother was put in position to kind of be my coverage. And that's why me and him had a strained relationship my whole life, pretty much, even though, you know, we were cool, like, but I never looked at him like a brother. It's like my mom made him as like, he's my father. That's what the, the black community, we go wrong with that because we don't have fathers, but you try to put your older, the older siblings in charge and make them be the second mother or the, the second father. And it creates a divide between the siblings and you don't do that. And that's why I actually have respect for my brother as like a, a father because he always acted as that. Like, I, I don't come, but I don't confide in him either. So I'm not close with him because I, I can't talk to you about stuff because you on mommy's side. You're like the dad. You're on my mom's side. You're not going to, and then you're not going to go up against mommy even when she's wrong. You're going to, because you're her man, you you go agree with her. So I've never really had that true coverage and true discipline. And when my brother tried to discipline me, I'm like, you're my brother. You're not my dad. Get out my face. Like, what are you doing? Like, who are you talking to? You are not my dad. You're not my dad. And, you know, it, it can, it, it's, it's really just, when you really think about it, it, it's a lot. And 
that's why I realized for me, I didn't understand. Even when my baby dads, they, you know, say certain things to the kids. I feel like some stuff I'd be like, don't talk to my child like that. Like, and they're just correcting them. But I feel like dads be too strict, but moms are, can be too lenient sometimes. And the kids will take advantage of that. So I'm now, God is teaching me the, the, that that's why he created us both. And that's why both are vital to the household because dads bring stability. They bring structure to the household. A good dad is bringing structure. A good dad chastises his child. A good dad, a good dad corrects his child. A good dad don't just give his child whatever the child wants. And because I understand how God treats me, I, I never had a, a father's coverage and a father's love until I got my relationship with God. So now it's like, I'm understanding more through my relationship with God and seeing how he treats me is how a father is supposed to treat their child, especially their girls and their boys, both of them. And that's a lot of the problem with me, how I feel about these in our community. Everybody feels like the girls just need so much extra care and all of this in which, you know, we're weaker. We, we do, we need instruction. But y'all spend so much time focusing on the girls and trying to tell the girls everything and you tell the boys nothing. And that's why our boys are out here lost. They're just as lost. They're just as sad. Their souls are just as depleted. They're just as confused, which is why a lot of them out here getting involved and entangled with one another because they're lost. They're looking for coverage from one another, which don't have no, they have no clue. It's the blind leading the blind. You going out here into the streets looking for coverage from another boy who your age or maybe a couple years older than you because you think he unk or you think he uh whatever you whatever they want to call him and you think he the OG you can look up to him the whole time he's corrupt whole time he don't have no coverage whole time he was in survival mode his whole life whole time he don't know he ain't learned from his mistakes he older he 50 60 years old bless you baby. He's 60 years old, still doing things that he was doing when he was 20 years old. There's no growth there. So you're taking advice from a person like this who still ain't learned their lesson, who still haven't learned, who still, even himself, has no coverage because a lot of them don't even be having dads. So they never had that discipline from a, a, a father to a son. They ain't never been chastised. They never been corrected themselves. So they just lost out here. And then we all lost souls. We looking for love in all the wrong places. And, you know, that's what I have been just, the revelation God has been given to me um, about just respecting your man, you're respecting the men more because as women, these, as they call us, you know, modern day women, like I was reading in that, um, the book, I mean, the, the video yesterday about the judgment on the daughters of Zion, a lot of us don't respect men because men have never properly covered for us. And a lot of us, that first coverage was supposed to come from our father. I'm going to read this here that it says in Numbers. It says, the exception of a young woman's vow. So like I already said, if a man vows a vow to the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he should not break his word. He should do according to all that proceed out of his mouth. That's for the, the men. But it says, if a woman also vow a vow to the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hears her vow and her bond, and her bond where she has bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond where she has bound her soul shall stand. So if she vows a vow and she says a thing and she goes into agreement, you know, with any spirit, with any wh whoever and her father hold his peace, he don't say nothing, then it shall stand. But if his father disallows her in the day that he hears, if he hears her coming into agreement with something that, nah, -uh. yeah, uh-uh, no, you're not doing that. I know you, I know you're not. If he don't give her the okay for that, then it's, so it says, but if her father disallows her in the day that he hears, not any of her vows or of her bonds where she has bound her soul shall stand. And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. So basically, the Lord will, you know, allow her to be free from that bond because her father disagreed with it. But if her father agrees with it, then it shall stand. And then it goes on. So once you, as, as women, 
our fathers are supposed to give us to our husband. He's supposed to give us away to the man that we build our future with. A lot of us are not given away properly because a lot of us don't even have a dad. And then the dads that we do have, because either we don't respect them because how we see them treat our own mom, we don't respect their opinions, we don't respect their judgment. And a lot of the dads are so just, they don't even correct their daughters. They don't even, I mean, I just see it. I see so many women that do have dads, they baby mamas too. They jump in dude to dude too. They so promiscuous. They so uh, revealing in clothing. Like, they're, they're like that too. It's almost as if I didn't have no dad. I, and that's what I always say. What benefit does it for you to have a dad and they ain't teaching you nothing? You doing the same things that the girls with no dads have. Then what separates the two? You're not, I'm, I'm not seeing the benefit of truly having the dad. I'm not seeing the benefit of having the mom. If you're doing the same things, this is how even God feels within his true believers and his true children versus the heathen. If you're doing the same thing that the heathen doing, what, what separates it? What, it, it's like, where is the value in having that coverage, that leadership from your God or from your parent if if you're doing the same thing that the rest of them doing? Because you being monkey see, monkey do. And that's what happens a lot of time because it's more of us out here that don't have coverage, that don't have that discipline. And then you see the kids out there that they free, they able to do whatever they want. And really, they don't want to be able to do just everything they want, but they don't have no guidance. They don't have no structure. They come from broken homes or they come from, even if it's a two-parent household, both the parents are corrupt. They ain't teaching them nothing. Many people come from two-parent households and still lead, have crazy lives. Both my cousins is dead. They came from two-parent household. Both of them is... And it's all love and everything. But it just goes to show that it hold no weight when the parents that are in their home have no coverage. Y'all be coming together, getting married. So many people, they don't, people get married out of their own will, not because of God's will, because if it's through God's will, God is going to be at the center of that union. You're going to go to God about each other. You're not running to your mama, daddy, telling your whole family, all oh, y'all business and, and letting everybody in on y'all union, something that's supposed to be sacred. You didn't even go to God about your person. God, if God ain't in that, then don't say that. Oh, let what no what God brings together, let no man separate. God ain't bring y'all together. You brought your own stuff together, and Satan probably brought you together. Satan brought you together. Okay, go ahead, boo boo. Mommy doing a video. And this is why it's important for us to, for one, get our own selves together, because. You must lead by example. We can't respect a lot of the stuff, at least I'm going to speak for myself. I can't respect a lot of stuff my mother says because I see how you move. I see what you do. And I don't want to do that. I don't want, so it's like I can't even listen to everything you say because a lot of these mothers out here, they operating in Jezebel and Delilah spirits. They are misand They have misandry as well. They hate women. So I mean, they hate men. So they are seeking to destroy men out here so they're going to teach their daughters how to destroy men out here a lot of these men that hate women that objectify women they're going to teach other men how to go out here and manipulate women to get what you want get this get that don't you don't ever gotta you you don't ever gotta take it serious you don't ever gotta truly commit to her you don't ever gotta provide for her you don't ever gotta protect her you don't ever have to fully cover her the way she need to be covered because you're just there to get her body to use her to make her your to, to use her for all the things that, that men be using women for. So many women get used up. You getting caught, get cars in your name for these dudes. Dudes who can never do those things for you, but you doing these things for them. He's the man is supposed to be covering the woman. So if you covering a man as if, as if you're the man, it's backwards. And we know in the black community, it's ass backwards. Completely ass backwards. And we discussed that in the Willie Lynch video because this was all a part of the plan this is they, they purposely did this they purposely got us out of our our innate being of who we are our natural state of being women are supposed to be naturally submissive naturally able to depend on her man 
The man is supposed to be naturally independent, naturally confident. The roles have reversed. And this is why there is conflict. And you got so many men jealous of women because the women are now in the positions that the men were supposed to be in. It has switched. And we need to switch it back. It's, it's like so corrupted. And like I was saying earlier, like the dude was saying, women are not supposed to be preaching, but y'all won't do it. We're, women are not being covered properly. And once like, let's finish reading. Because it says, and um, so after the father, if he says, no, this is before she come, this is before, before a woman is under coverage from her husband, you're supposed to be under coverage from your father. Many of us ain't never been covered by a father. And then it makes it hard for us to be covered by a husband because we don't even know what true coverage looks like. And sometimes what we think is uh, controlling is just coverage. It's just protecting. And a man that loves you and, is, does, and God has put him in your life as your protector, he's not going to just be allowing you to just uh, wear all these slutty clothes. He's not, you shouldn't even want to. And when you get that Jezebel and Delilah spirit up off you, I'm telling you, Cause I had that spirit. I got picked. I got pictures, and I'm gonna I'm always keep my stuff to see how far I've grown. The other day, I was in the store, and um, I was trying on these like jean shorts, but I didn't know that the shorts had that like. I didn't know my whole butt cheek. I was like, oh no, it's just my. You can just tell that 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 whorish spirit is off me. It's gone. I don't. I can't wear the same things I used to wear. Now it's the certain cute little tops that I like. But even not too much. Like, I would never wear anything showing my nipples no more. I can never just have my butt cheeks just hanging out. Like, I can't, I can't, my, that spirit is up off me. So if you feel like sexiness is showing all your sacred parts, things like, things that's supposed to be only for your man to see, baby, you got a lot of unpacking to do. You need to go back. And this is what I'm saying. It has taken for God to, to truly go back, you got to unpack all them boxes, them boxes that you just stored up and taped up and you put them to the side and you don't even want to unpack that because it's, it's, it's darkness in them boxes. You you just want to leave that stuff to the side. I don't even want to deal with that. No, baby, you need to go take that tape off, unpack that box, get that stuff out that box, put it where it need to go. Put it where it need to go. You need to do what it needs to do. You got to deal with that stuff. Running from stuff is only going to hurt you. Running from what happened to you in childhood is only going to hurt you. And it's why you you carry out what you carry out. I saw at this point, I can look at a man and a woman and see everything that they didn't been through in their childhood because it, it, it reeks in your behavior. It reeks in how you think. It reeks in how you move. It reeks in what you say. It's just so evident. It's so evident. And that's how... You know, when you have, when you start to unpack stuff and you start to put it where it need to go and be like, oh, and a lot of people don't want to unpack stuff because you're going to have to hold your own parents accountable. You're going to have to hold yourself accountable. You're going to have to really start holding folks accountable. And you don't really want to do that because you're desperate for love. You desperate for their, their uh, validation. You desperate to be liked by them. You don't want to really hold them accountable. And even if some of these parents, when you try to hold them accountable, they're going to gaslight you, make you feel like you're crazy, manipulate you, say, oh, I'm just, uh, I just did the best I can do. Instead of saying, I'm sorry, I did that. I'm sorry. You know, I, I really didn't know. I really didn't know. I repented before God for that stuff. Like, if people don't, Man, this, I'll be here for hours if I really just get to going in. Until you really, be, like, you have to feel sorrowful for what you've done. Because repentance and just being like, just vain apologies. Oh, I'm sorry. Nah, when you truly sorry, you feel that stuff. You you feel it. It, it actually hurts you that you have hurt someone else. And this is a part of the unpacking that needs to be done. You know, um, but the rest of this is just going over, um, you know, after the father. So the husband, now the husband, once you are under your husband's leadership, if you make an agreement, if you come into agreement, if you make a bond, let's, let's read it. It says, and if she had, if she at all had an husband, when she vowed or uttered out her lips 
where she bound her soul and her husband heard it and held his peace at her in that day and then that he heard it then her vows shall stand and her bonds were with her she bound her soul shall stand but if her husband disallowed her on that day um in which she uttered her lips with the root then it should have none effect and the lord shall forgive her and then every vow of a widow and of a divorce where they have bound their souls shall stand against her because you're not covered if you you're a widow or if you're divorced you're not under coverage unless you get under god then you're you're covered you can't just be free out here and you don't have god you 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 just lost out here because now you're free you're a you're a vagabond you're wandering you're homeless you have no spiritual father you have no spiritual protection because you're just a vagabond you're wandering out here you're not under coverage you have to have coverage And ultimately having God's coverage, I'm telling you, it's the best coverage because he going to tell you everything. Like there's nothing, like he said in Jeremiah, call to me and I will show you all things that you do not know. I did, it took for me to move away and for me to really understand so much. I just, as much as sometimes that I get mad about my journey, because I had to go through a lot just to get here. I had to go through all of this just to get the revelation. I had to do so much. I'd be like, dang, why I got to do so much? I got to do this all the time. I got to fast. And then you say I ain't fasting correctly and this and that. And I'm getting mad and stuff. But I'm like, I'm seeing what it's doing for me. And it's like, girl, you really are healing. I'm learning my attachment style. All of these are things you need to know when you really want to get to know yourself. And when you really want to get to know why things have been the way it has and why it continues to be the way it is, why you continue to have these failed relationships, why you continue to be shut off from people, why you continue. You have to get to know yourself. You have to understand where you came from. You got to unlearn a lot of the stuff that you learned from where you came from and learn some new things. You got to get education. You never stop learning. You, there's never too much to learn. I got a video that I need to watch after this too about from dr fox and the thing is god will put he sends destiny helpers for you i have had no physical person to help me and guide me along in this journey but god will put people videos on from youtube the word ultimately the word really just really helps he will give you dreams he will just put it onto your spirit he would just you would just it's like you just have an awakening just it just seemed like out of nowhere one day you just had this revelation it's because god didn't put it onto you like within this past week, me understanding the father thing, like the importance of having that father coverage, that you need that father coverage. Me having God as my father, it really has showed me so much because like I said, he's the one that disciplines me. Things that I don't understand, like things that my baby dad would tell me, and I'm like, I'm telling you, that's how I know when he is right about something and when I was wrong, because God going to come back and get me for that. He's going to tell me, he's going to reveal to me that he might even drop a video about something like recently. Like I told you, I have avoided, uh, an avoidant attachment style and that type of attachment style, as I was looking in the comments, as I was reading that video, watching the video and people hate people with those, that uh, attachment style. But I also do, cause I, I understand it too because I've dealt with that too from my first BD. He has an avoidant attachment style, which is why, you know, I started feeling like, dang, I ain't good enough and this and that. But we both had it. It's just that I felt because of his narcissism and that love bombing they doing and they make you feel super safe and super comfortable in the beginning. But then they shut it off like or like pull back because avoidance. We do. We be all in. And then it's like when we feel like we're getting too close to you or you we, we, it's, it's becoming like, oh, I got to get too vulnerable. Oh, it's like, OK, let me pull back. And it's them relationships with a lot of push and pull It's nine times out of 10. You in a relationship with a person that has an avoidant, avoidant attachment style and you might have an anxious attachment style all based on your caregiver, based on your parents. Your parents are the reason you attach the way you do or the way you're detached the way you are. It's because of that. Nurturing component, nine times out of 10 from your father, I mean, from your mother, because with your mother, bonding starts from the womb. You bond with your babies from the womb. It starts there. And a lot of parents, a lot of these mothers, when you're pregnant for the wrong reasons, when, you, when you're doing stuff out of the, your intentions, 
and you didn't really want the baby or you only having a baby for a certain reason, it might affect how you bond with that baby from the womb. The baby feels everything. Our babies feel everything. That's why when we're pregnant, they say, don't be stressing. Don't be doing all that because your baby feeling it. Now your baby taking on that stress. Now your baby is feeling all that you're going through. So your baby is even feeling the connection between you two. We, when we pregnant, you know, most of us, we talking to our baby while it's in a womb. We talking to our stomach. We feeling the kicks. We interacting. We pushing back. You already start that interaction from the womb. And then when they come out, you talking to the baby. Even though it can't talk, it can't even see, but you talking to it. The baby can hear you. The baby been hearing you. Your baby is connected to you. Your baby was in, in your insides. They was in you. And when you have parents that don't bond with their children, especially the mother, that's why I say it's so important as a mother, because you, you create that bonding from the beginning of time since they, since they first was planted in you. You create that bonding. And, you know, it's even a video. I'm going to link it in the description box. Um, Cause it's a video out here on, on YouTube about them doing a, a like a um a demonstration like they were showing how the baby depending on how the mom treated the baby tr was affecting how the baby reacted if the baby was calm if the baby felt safe like we truly do have impact on our children from the from them being infants I mean in the womb as they're developing. In our womb, they're developing. We're creating that, that bonding moment. So a lot of times we're disconnected from our parents because of the lack of bonding. You know, the, the lack of nurturing from our moms. And then when we actually come out into the world, we begin to bond with our dad. That's why when, when the baby first born, it go on the mama chest and then it go on the daddy chest. You know, I know... That's it's for bonding. They make the dad take his shirt off so he can too, you know. And I realized that with my daughter. I'm like, my daughter has not, my little baby, she has not seen her dad in two years now. Two years in person. She see him on FaceTime and stuff, but she has not seen him in two years. And like over the past two weeks or something, like this whole time, she knows who her dad is. If I show her a picture, she knows who her dad is. And over the past two weeks, She's really just been infatuated with her dad. I'm like, you know, so this has been making me super emotional. And that's why I'm like, we got to figure this thing out, bro. Like, we, we got to figure, we got to figure this thing out because she does need you and you want her. And this is why I say I know it's a spiritual attack on this because it's like, it really don't make sense why we be butting heads. It'd be like stupid stuff. It, it was never nothing truly, truly toxic in like a violent way or nothing like that for us to be at button heads like that and i also know that my attachment style has affected the relationship i know you know he has he has affected the relationship too because of my lack of trust but because i have a fearful avoidant disorganized attachment style i took the test um and this is stuff that you got to do you got to be real so when i was watching that avoidant video and i was listening to what they were saying, I'm like, hey, they talking about me. I really do have this type of attachment style that I'm, it's actually a detachment style. And it's like when you're getting close to something, you pull away from it. And you might actually care about the person, but you just fearful of, it's a, like I have fearful avoidance. So I only avoid close connections because I'm scared that the close connection is going to hurt me in the end. And I might, you know, my abandonment issues play out in a, detached way versus a getting clingy way whereas though these anxious attachment style people they're afraid of abandonment so they just they just cling on to people and they chase they do a lot of chasing trying to chase in the relationship you do more chasing as you chasing a person that's avoidant you're like kind of creeping us out a bit and it's like come on like relax like because we do need space and for me when you respect my space and like understand that I do need space because it, it's the way we had to grow up, super independent, had to do so much for ourselves. So we're naturally, we just need that space. And I'm an introvert, so I need that space. And when you don't respect the fact that I need personal space, I do that even with my kids. I'd be like, 
come on, y'all all in my personal space. Like, it's a like right now, can I just have me, my time? Like, can I just, like, you you overwhelming me. It's messing with my senses. You, you're messing with me now. Like, back up a little bit. And my baby, she's like, she's clingy to me too. Um, but it just made me realize a lot of this stuff. And I realized how I am with, you know, her dad and how, you know, he was, he told me that um, he feel like he can't ever say nothing to her because anything like if, if he say something to her, that's actually like disciplining her, even though he's far, both of them do it. And I'd be like, because even from, with my older daughter, if her, she on the phone with her dad, she got her feet on the walls or something. He's like, get your feet off the wall, this, that, and that. And I'd be like, they always got something to say. Like, they always, you know, but they're being, they're doing what a father's supposed to do. I don't know that because I didn't have that. So, you know, I had to explain that to him the other day that I don't know what it's like to have a father. So me seeing you, you know, discipline, it's like, I'm like, do I need it? Because I'm a mama bear too. And because I never had that true protection that I wanted, I feel like it's my job to protect my kids from everybody in the world, even if it that even if that's their own dads. Like there's no way I would let my kids' dads just abuse them or anything like that. They're gonna have to answer to me because you're not gonna just do that to my kids. But I also am learning God had to reveal this stuff to me. It's God like God had to reveal this stuff to me this week. And he was like, and I had to think about it. Like the way God treat me, that's how a dad is supposed to be. God corrects me. God chastises me. He disciplines me. And it ain't in anger. They don't say it angrily to them because they don't have to. They're men. Their voice alone checks these girls. It checks them. You know? And that's the importance of the presence of a father. And that's why our kids do need their fathers. Just the simple, they don't have to be like, not all that yelling that we do as mothers. Men don't have to do that. It's just something about their presence and about, you know, even with my daughter, like she, she don't talk that much. Like she talks, but she can't sit and just hold a conversation with her dad, but she just likes that he be on FaceTime. They'll be on FaceTime for like an hour. And now she's, you know, she about to be three soon. And that's why I say over the past couple of weeks, she just be like, daddy, she want me to call her dad all the time. She want to call daddy, call daddy. And even if she'll just set the phone up and she go run around and stuff, but she just, and if she come back to the phone and he not there, she upset. And she's like, you know, mommy, you know, call daddy, daddy. I'm like, well, he had, he's, he's busy, baby. Like he's going to call you back. He's going to call you back later. She's like, oh. and it's just like. To see she just need she just likes to feel that he's there. Even us as women, you know how sometimes you just want you don't care if your man is in the room with you or not, you just need to know that he's there in the house. We just need the the presence. The presence. You know? And even with God, like we just need to know, like send me a sign that you present. Like he'll make it known that he's there. Even with me, when I'm getting mad at him. And I feel like he left me. I'm feeling abandoned again. Like a lot of times I get in this, this mood with God because I'll be like, oh, this is happening. And it's like, I feel like you're, you, you left me. It's that abandonment flaring up again. Like, oh, you left me. Oh, you just making me suffer. Oh, but he always send that reassurance. I'm still here, girl. I hear you. I see you. Like, just do what I'm telling you to do. You don't need to know all the answers. You don't need to start trying to go back into controlling things. You don't need to do that. You don't need to get in fight or flight, little girl. I got you. I got you, you know, and it's really because I really do feel covered now. I really feel protected and the way God do me. It makes me see how my man is supposed to treat me, how you supposed to cover me because God, after you leave your father, you go to your husband, you go to your man. So if your man is not covering you, if my man don't cover me how God's supposed to, financially, physically, emotionally. If I don't feel emotional safe, emotionally safe with you, physically safe, like, and don't feel like you worried about covering me financially too, like all the weight of the world, the burdens of the world is on my shoulders and you're not doing nothing to, to help get it off me. And I'm the, I'm a woman. I don't feel like you, you got me. I don't feel safe. I don't, 
I don't feel that. And as a woman, that's what we're looking for. We need to feel safe on three on, on several different levels. We need spiritual protection from you because ultimately the man is supposed to be the one that's the sitting with God. You are supposed to sit with God. We ain't even really supposed to have to necessarily we we we're supposed to have our own relationship with God too. Because sometimes there's things that's gonna happen with our man, and sometimes he's weak. And now our prayers gonna need to go up for our man to cover him. Like we both need our own relationship with God. One person shouldn't just have it shouldn't just be on one person. Both people should. But these days it's like a lot of women have the relationship with God and the men don't. And it's like we're responsible for covering this man. I gotta cover him, uh, especially in our community. You got us having to cover them financially because the women making the, a lot of the bread now. Then I got to cover you and, t and make sure I, I tiptoe around your emotions so you don't zap. So so you don't, you know, got to figure out how to come and talk to you so that you not feeling emasculated and all of this. And I got to cover spiritually. I'm got to be the one that's saying all the prayers. I'm got to be the one that's doing all the reading. I'm got to be, the, I got to be the one that's going to church all the time. I got to be the one. It's, it's, make, it, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And it really will take you out your feminine nature. Like, and on all aspects, mentally, spiritually, financially, emotional, those are four components of feeling safe. It's not just no one. All four is what make one feel completely safe. Your children feel completely safe when you pour into all of them. All of those areas. A lot of us feel neglected by our parents, even though our parents made sure we had physical things, food, shelter, water, clothes, things for school, but they lack the emotional component. So we don't feel safe. So now we have emotionally dysreg dysregulated disorders and cannot communicate in healthily in our relationships. We cannot, we can't properly coexist with one another and deal with the emotions that each other have because we were lacking on how to, we had to, it, it just depends on which aspect you want. But I know for a lot of us, and especially if, if you have like this avoidant attachment and even anxious, it's all based off the emotions on how those emotions were perceived with your caregivers as you were growing up. And as an avoidant, a lot of times all emotional things we had to deal with on our own. Your parents were not available for you emotionally. You had to deal with every emotion, good and bad, by yourself. By yourself, especially the bad ones. Not getting that reassurance. Um, you know, so it's, it's important for us to have proper coverage. As parents, it's our job to properly cover our children. It's a whole job to cover someone. It's a whole job. And I think for me, that's why I just don't be wanting to know relationships and all of that because it's like it's a job it literally is a job and i'm trying to nurture i'm trying to heal myself i'm trying to get my own self right so it's like and i have children so it'd be like to have to now have to do all of that it just it just be a lot and this is why god will send you in your isolation season and so he can he you can have that time to get you together and that's why you you got to stop jumping relationships and rushing everything and want to jump here and there and there and there and, and all these relationships instead of taking time to get to know yourself, to get to understand yourself so that you can properly become the, the, the better version, the best version of yourself, at least a better, because as you grow, you're going to always be growing into something more, into something new as you learn more, as you encounter yourself more, as you experience yourself through the different stages of your life, because what your body was doing when you was a teenager ain't what it's doing when you when you in your twenties, ain't what it's doing when you in your thirties, ain't what it's doing when you in your forties. So it's like you constantly getting to know yourself, and this is why you do always take time for yourself, both men and women. And you can't be so clingy to a person that you don't allow them their space so they can just soak up in who they are. Because so many people get in relationships sometimes, so so many times, and you want to become enmeshed. With the other person you don't have your own identity you don't you still have your own identity in a relationship you just coming together and you two together are able to make greatness but you still remain true to who you are they remain true to who they are they have their activities you have your activities y'all do things together it doesn't mean that 
you have to be insecure because this person wants to, you know, hang out by themselves for a while. It doesn't mean that they're cheating. It doesn't mean like, but when you have these, all these insecurities because of relationships from the past, because of what you've seen in your own household growing up, and you knew that when your dad did that, when, when he came back home, mama was tripping because she knew what was going on. Or you saw, you know, it's a lot to unpack. And it really starts from your childhood because my tr lack of trust in men, it's been, it's been so long. Like, it ain't start with my second baby, baby dad. It ain't start with my first baby dad. It didn't start with my first boyfriend. It didn't, it's, it's, it go all the way back to really my father. And then after that, all the other boys that I had to deal with, even boys that, you know, wasn't uh, intimate, even just the boys at school, you know, things that going through different things and never having nobody to talk to, all that stuff. I realized all that stuff was held in just to me. Like I'm the one who had to deal with all of that. And a lot of times we don't even understand how high school, middle school, elementary school, we still carry on a lot of stuff that even happens from back then. So much stuff. I told you on that other video about them teachers, them teachers, the kids, those years of our life, our primitive years really do affect us. And the rest of our, we spend the rest of our life just trying to cope, just trying to cope through all of those feelings that we never unpack. You got to go back and unpack all of it. Why you don't trust one, women? Who was the first woman that did something to you? You got to go to the first. Who did it? Who broke the trust? Who was the first man? Who was the first man? Who was the first woman? You got to really go back and unpack that stuff. You know, but um, I ain't even, I ain't even end up, um, Get into the other thing. But what I did want to finish reading off of this uh, vows are not to be broken part, you know, because it said every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it or her husband may make it void. So when we come under coverage from our men, if they agree with it, cool. If they don't agree with it, then it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a no. It's supposed to be a no. And it says, these are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth in her father's house. Because the father's responsible for his daughter until she's, until she's given away to another man. He give, he post, he's supposed to give her away to another man. And you know what? I realized I lost respect for my dad the day that, you know, and this is why I always had gave more respect to my first baby dad than my own father. Like, um, when my dad, when my first baby was born and I remember we was down at my mom's house and my dad was in town, um, or something, he ended up coming over to the house and it, he was just like, so nonchalant. My baby dad was the one, you know, he came downstairs, whatever, you know, shook his hand and all of that stuff to meet him. And, um, my dad ain't even stay long. He saw the baby real quick. He just like, so nonchalant but I also too understand my dad didn't have his parents I don't know what has happened to him like in his life his parents from what I know they died when he was super young like a little boy um so I don't I don't know I don't know I, I don't know I don't really know him like that in a sense of that I've ever we ever talked about anything and I feel like in these families that already stop. I feel like in these families, we don't be talking about what really needs to be talked about. Everything is like hush, hush, you know, and a lot of times the, the parents don't want to even really face what has happened. And that's why they carry out in these unclean spirits that carry out and they end up wreaking havoc. And you end up passing the generational curses on and on because you're not you're not confronting it. And that's why it goes on to bloodline after bloodline. And it always become a black sheep in each each generation because ultimately the pressure gets put on the black sheep to be that one to answer the call. And many of us as the black sheep, we don't want to answer our call in our life because it, it come with a lot. It come with a lot. And that's why I realized why I, I'm like, why I got to go through all of this to, to get what you promised me. But I got to realize I'm breaking off so many curses. I'm breaking off chains. That's why the enemy to be on me. Like, 
How dare this one come in? This is why we be attacked so hard. How dare the enemy? How dare you come in and try to break off these covenants that your ancestors made with me? How dare you try to bind? Like how, how dare you try to come in and do this? How dare you try to renew the bloodline? How dare you? That's why he be on the chosen one so hard, you know? But I realized I'm breaking off stuff from my father's generation, from my mother's uh, bloodline that I don't even know. But I definitely know, especially when it comes to poverty, when it comes to toxic relationships, that that one, those two for sure is something that is, that's why the pressure is on me so hard in those two areas. Card, uh, cardiovascular disease, health, health issues. That's why God is pressing me so hard in these three areas, my health. And I'd be like, dang, everybody else can eat what they want to eat. Everybody, I can't do nothing. I can't do this. <laughs> like, God is because it's generational curses of illness that comes from what you're eating. Like eating that stuff. I'm like, I realize I don't eat a lot of the stuff that I used to eat. Like my dad uh, always was sick, having strokes. Her, him and my mom known for having high blood pressure. I don't have none of that. Like a lot of this stuff stops with me. It stops with me. So yes, it's more harder for me. Yes, as the chosen one, you're you, you breaking off a lot of stuff in different areas that you don't know. You know, um, but I, like I was saying, I remember I lost, you know, a lot of respect for him that day. My, my baby daddy had to be the one, you know, to be like, you know, come back through later. You know, let's have a beer and let's talk. And they were, my baby dad remind me so much of my dad. They good cooks. They drink. They drink a lot. That's why my mom said that she, she wasn't dealing with my dad like that. Even though I feel like she was, you was his little young little side joint that end up. Get, ha having that baby to get get, get that check. Um, and that's why his other daughters never liked my mom or don't like me because his daughter is my mom's age. And some of them actually a little bit older than my mom. Like, you know, anyhow. <laughs> but, and my baby dad had to be the one to be like, yeah, come back, you know, come back later on so we can, you know, talk. The fact that my baby daddy got a, you're the father. You're supposed to be checking him. You're supposed to be, you know, trying to see what's up. Who is this man that my daughter with? She just had a baby with this. Who is this? You are supposed to be doing that. And for him to be the one that be like, it's like my baby dad was like, I looked at him like kind of like father-ish too. Like, and I think too, that's why I have some kind of respect for him because he provides like a dad. He plans like a dad. Like he, you know, but when he try to correct, I don't like, that's the part because I'm not used to a dad correcting. I'm used to my dad just, giving me, when I do ask money, give me the money. I think that you're supposed to just provide, but never say nothing. But no, when your, what it say, when her husband may establish or her husband may make it void, these are the statutes between man and his wife. If, his, if, she, if he says no to these things that she's coming into agreement with or that she's trying to do that actually is detrimental for her, and he says no, and, he, and he's giving you good wisdom and good sound advice, it's not that he's being controlling. It's that he knows something that you don't know and he's trying to help you. And I had to realize that too because when my first BD, like he says, man, like you ain't green no more. But back then I was green. And when he was trying to tell me certain stuff, I'm like, ah, uh, whatever. Like you this, you that. Calling saying you're not a real man because you saying you doing this, you doing that. Really realizing he actually, now you know that I'm older, he is a real man. He's not a perfect man, but he is a real man. Even with my second BD, he is a real man. He's not a perfect man. He still is underdeveloped, undeveloped, but he is a, he's a good man. He's not perfect. Just like I'm a good woman, but I'm not perfect. I got some character flaws too. And like, like the main thing is my attitude. Um, you know, the way I deliver your thing, my, my messages to them, that has, that's what they both have said. Like, even the, the other dude, he like, you cool for you just crazy. Like, and it's, all, it's, it's when I get mad. It's, but it's, that's what men are looking for, how you are when you get mad. It's cool when everything is on the up and ups. Same for them. When everything on the up and ups is cool, but we need to see how y'all are when y'all get mad. Do you, are you going to feel like you need to hit me when you mad? You feel like you need to demean me when, I'm, when you're mad at me? Or when I do something, how are you correcting me? How are you the manner in which you do it? And I know that because I heard how my mom talked to men and how, 
how she, you know, demeaned my, my stepdad. And that's the only man I really, you know, seen her interact with like that. And, you know, whatever. But to see, that's how I, I, I have learned how to just talk at people, even how she talked to me. Like for me, it's like she could express negative things, but you can't really tell, give me my cahoots and tell me when I'm doing good for real. Like you could only speak the negative things. And I realized that with my self as I, as I was watching that avoidant video and just a lot of things that God has revealed to me, like it's easier for me to express my negative feelings about my partner than it is for me to say the the mushy stuff like you know i can give you your cahoots or whatever and like tell you you know you good at this you good at that but it's like that intimate stuff that mushy stuff like that oh i i i'm really am hesitant of that oh i love you and all of that like i'm really it is like being real vulnerable like that and like showing my love and compassion like that i show it through acts but through the words it'd be like and even sometimes with the act, I'm like reluctant. And even if I am super intimate, and at, you know, at one point, it's like that pull. It's like I pull away because I feel like I'm getting too close. I'm getting too vulnerable. I feel like my guards is coming down too much. And when I feel like they're coming down too much, it's like, uh-uh, nope, we got to lock it back up. I, you cannot have my heart like that. Like, you know, and it's like you, I'm fearful of love for real. I'm fearful of falling in love. I'm fearful of commitment like that like i'm fearful of marriage i'm fearful of all those things because negative thinking thinking about the worst that can happen versus thinking about how good it can be and even thinking about you know just thinking that i'm thinking and especially because of what i see in the world and what i've seen from my own parents and it's corrupt my mind on it so it's like i'm like uh, i'd rather be just safe and not do it versus being open to what can be. And even when I'm experiencing that, you know, it's like, okay, this is, this can't be, can't be good because I ain't even used to this. Like I was saying in that last video, you know, so it's just a lot that it's so much that we truly have to unpack. Um, it's, it's, it's so much. And, you know, that's another thing that I wanted to mention because when I was reading a book of Esther, let me go flip to it right quick. Um, when I was reading that the last week and when we see how our parents, like the matriarch, when we see how they are to one another, it affects how we treat partners and how we treat friends and how we just treat our relationships. And the, y'all, if y'all ever read the book of Esther, when the King, uh, Azarus or whatever, when he told his, his queen, he told his wife Vashti, to, to come in. So he wanted to, you know, basically flaunt her, ob objectify her for real, but that's his possession, you know, I don't want to say possession, but that's his, that's his lady. And that's the queen. He wanted her to, you no, know, he wanted to show her, show off her beauty. Y'all know how these, um, Mindy, they, they like trophy wives and they like to have a good piece on their arm because women is like their, ex their accessory. Um, and, they wanted he wanted to just show off his his lady, you know. He wanted to show her off, and she didn't come when he gave the order. And as the king, when you give when he give an order, you must you must adhere to the order and submit to him. And because she didn't she didn't come, she didn't submit. He she basically was dethroned, and that's how Esther got that spot because he said, "I'm gonna make an example out of you because if you disrespect the king." And you are holding a feast in the other room, um, in the other inner court or whatever, for the other ladies. And we all here at this this party. And if these women see that the queen can disrespect her husband like that and not submit to her husband like that, it's going to teach all the other women that they too can do the same thing. So it said, for this deed of the queen shall come abroad to all women. Because basically when it happened, the king was like, you know, he went to the, the wise men, the astrologers or whatever, eggs. You know what what should what should we do and they were like you you need to make an example out of her you need to get rid of her basically and find you a younger woman and a prettier woman that uh ain't you know that's that's fair or whatever um 
And y'all see how men like to do that. They'll, after you, they feel like you disrespectful and all that. They try to go younger, get somebody that's younger, prettier, and that's more willing to submit to all their mess. Even though with these men these days, they be wanting us to submit to some complete BS. And that's, it's, it's nonsense. We're, we can't come into agreement with that nonsense. And it's it just what it is. Um, and these men out here are perishing because they don't have true, true, true leadership. They like to abuse their authority. And that's what you can't do. Because when you abuse your authority, God will dethrone you too. Nobody is exempt from being dethroned. Nobody is exempt from losing their birthright. No one is exempt from being demoted. Adam and Eve, they were demoted. Nobody is exempt. King Solomon, demoted. Like, no, no one is exempt from going without consequences. From Nobody's above reproach when it comes to God if you don't fulfill your obligations and your duty for that position that you were called to. Nobody. You don't get to just abuse your authority. You don't get to get in office and get in these different positions, whether it's a husband, wife, and many people do that. Men complain that the women, once they finally get married, they start slacking off too. You know, you just like we do at jobs. We get we we are best self when we're trying to get the job. We we good the first couple weeks, then we get to slacking off, doing what we want to do, coming in late. It's human nature, but you gotta understand that the consequences come with that. And then when you get fired, when you get demoted, you can't be mad at nobody but yourself. And that's what happened, because he said, um, it says and and um because he was mad, he was he was angry that it says, but the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth and his anger burned in him. Then the king said to the wise men, you know, what should we do basically? And the one of the wise men said, Vashti the queen has not done wrong only to the king, but also to the princess and to all the people that are in the provinces of the king of Ahasuerus. Ah 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 and it's because she, it, it, everybody that's there, like they were holding a big, a big ball, basically a feast, and you're making him look foolish in front of everybody. And he's he's the ruler over 120 provinces, like he's the king of all of these states, basically of these provinces, and you're making him look foolish because they like, dang, if your own woman don't even listen to you, why should we listen to you? How are you gonna be governing the country? You can't even get your own household in order, but yet you're trying to run a, run a, run the whole country. You're trying to run all these different states of provinces. Um, so he said, for this deed of the queen shall come abroad to all women so that they should despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king of Hazarius commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. And it says, let it be written among the laws of Persians and the Midis that it not be altered that Vashti come no more before the king and let the king give her royal estate to another that is better than she. So when the king went to him, went to them and said, what should I do basically since she did this? He, they said, give her position to somebody that is better than her. And then it said, um, and it says, and when the king's decree, which he shall make, shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great. All the wives shall give it to their husband's honor, both to great and small. So when they hear that the queen got demoted, it's gonna make all the women in the in the in the town and the country and all those you know states or whatnot. It's gonna make all of them remember to you give honor to your husband, you respect your husband, whether he's great or small, whether he has a high title, a high status, or a small one. It's gonna put fear in them that if you don't respect him, and y'all know men love respect, they need respect. They not they all that mushy love stuff. No, they just want to be respected. Respect is love to them. Treating them like a king is love to them. Listening to them and, you know, yeah, listening to them, respecting their opinion is love to them. Um, and no matter what his status is, you treat the janitor the same way you treat the president. That's how they feel. Um, hey, leave, leave that alone. Um, that's how they feel. And this is what the order was. Um, so, you know, I just thought that was interesting. And it's something else that I'm going to do another video on um, that I was reading about in, in Esther that I was like, this is, you know, important kind of to, to, to talk about mainly to the chosen ones. Um, but basically, if you see your 
the, the matriarchy, you see the these prominent women of society, you see them treat their men like that. You're going to think you could treat yours like that too. Whether that's the good or bad, you're going to set the example, especially because a lot of us are looking up to people older than us and that really have more status. Like in our community, y'all respect people who got higher status, but y'all don't care about character. Y'all just care about who got money, who got fame. And those are people that you should look up to because they have fame, they have money. So they must be something great. And you look up to them and then you want to carry out, do the things that they doing. Look how, you know, the, the rappers and stuff have influence on the community. And, you know, it's so monkey see, monkey do. And whatever they doing, whatever they say should be the style is what is the style. If they do this, you think you should do that. Like, look at how these, these artists have effect on our women and on our men. Um, you know, and on both sides of the spectrum, because men always act like that they don't be tuned into what the women are. But no, a lot of y'all be chasing that, that Instagram look because of what these Cardi B's look like, because of what these type of women look like. So you looking for these type of things. Then y'all be watching the flicks and y'all see what the women on the flicks do. So you expecting normal women to perform these flicks acts too. And cause you you're lustful because you need to unpack too. Why are you so lustful? What happened to you that made you so lustful that put the spirit of lust on you so heavy? Um, <laughs> unpack, baby. Unpack. Got to unpack it. Got to unpack it. You know, but we'll see how, like it was just saying there, you see how, bless you, bless you. You'll see how, like he was saying for, for Vashti, I got to make her an example because if she doing that and then she's holding her own seats with all the other women, you know, if they see her treat us like, treat her king like that, they're going to think they could treat their husbands like that. And that's how it kind of is in our family dynamics. If we see how our mother talk to men, we're going to think we could talk to men like that. We see how she treat men. We see her run men in and out. Or we see our dads, the boys see their dads treat women, beat on women. They go then to beating on women. They go to trying to date because you're doing what you see. Humans, period, are sponges. We don't stop being sponges just because we're adults. The same way our kids pick up on everything we do, they're sponges, we're still sponges too. Especially because a lot of us are still children in adult bodies. we are grown in age, but we haven't grown mentally, haven't grown spiritually, haven't grown emotionally, which is why when we get mad, we cut up like a toddler. We have meltdowns, like I'm telling y'all have, like a toddler, um... This is how we be acting, the lack of emotional intelligence, because we have not unpacked certain things, because we have not had, had we have not had revelation on certain things or why we acting out in certain ways and why we're doing certain things. Um, you know, so it really matters. <laughs> it really matters. We have to truly understand how it takes to is the, the you can't point the finger at just no one person and we have to create the space for one another to be vulnerable to be open you know even when i was talking to my ex the other day and you know because i did want to apologize um because it's, i just i do take certain things too far sometimes um and it's just like when i think about it after the fact i'm like it be, but at the moment, it's so big to me. Something that seems so small to other people be so big to me. And it's like, I have to start learning how to process why are you, why are you triggered like that? What is it about that? And learn to healthily talk about it instead of wanting to block you or this. It just talk about it. And I know him, he'll, you know, he'll want to talk about it. And I'm hitting a decline. And then I'll send a message. Don't call. Stop calling. This, that, he like, I just was trying to talk about it. Like, I realized he actually is a lot more emotionally intelligent than me. Um, and I really do like that. I really do like that because I'd be ready to run. I, I told her, I'm a runner, I'm a track star. I just want to get rid of you, get you out of my face because you just made me mad. And that's not how you have a healthy relationships. That's not how you work through issues. That's not running from it. That's not how you, you work through it. You need to talk about it, understand his perspective. He understand my perspective. We can either agree to disagree or figure out a solution to that thing. And it's about truly understanding 
the other side and seeing, you know, how and why they feel that way. Um, you know, and I just do like that, you know, it's it's hard for me to be vulnerable, like I said. And um, you know, he was like, just take your time. Like I just I love that. I can honestly say I do love how patient he is with that. Um, but I do be still feeling like he be lying about stupid small stuff. And that's what triggers me. Lying about stupid stuff to me, it's be like it be like it just it's like you insult my intelligence and it's gaslighting. And when you gaslight me and I know I know what I know and I know you're trying to play down because I know you, I study you, I examine you and you trying to lie. It's like now you're provoking me to rag. But it's I have to learn how to work through those triggers. So that's actually a video that I'm about to watch because um, Dr. Fox had a, a video uploading about that and I need to I need to see that. But Overall, you guys, I did want to read Isaiah 30, but it basically was just saying, um, you know, trusting in the Lord and not trusting in Egypt. And trusting in Egypt could be trusted in like Egypt is known as a place of bondage. That's who we were enslaved to. Our masters trusted in the Lord and stopped trusting in the government. Trust more in the Lord than you trust in the doctors. In this Bible, I mean, it goes into all of that because God takes offense when you trust in what the doctor tell you your, your future is. If the doctor say you only got a couple months to live and you listen to that, God is going to be upset with you. If you listen to any man, any human, any mortal before you trust in what the Lord say, because the Lord can reverse anything. And a lot of times the, the plagues that come onto us is because we didn't listen to the Lord. And a lot of the things that he allow us to go through is so that we can call on the Lord and not call on a doctor. I mean, I have so many testimonies through this season, how me calling on the Lord, I didn't have to call on no dang on plumber. I didn't have to call me calling on the Lord. It's like supernatural miracles. I didn't got to call on the Lord for this. We worried about these issues, health issues, dental issues, call on the Lord. I'm sure, I'm assure you, he can lead you the way because he knows that this government is corrupt. He knows it. That's why judgment is coming down on America. The modern day Babylon judgment day is coming. Judgment, judgment day is coming. And I can really go all in. We, we probably gonna have cause this election and stuff that's coming up. We know who's really about to be in office. Um, and he's going to be the catalyst to letting that other side come in. He's going to let them right in so that they can plot to let the so that they can get it back in blood against us. Mm -hmm. Y'all already know I have a whole, prophetic play, a whole prophetic warning playlist that is talking about Russia versus America and what's to come with us. We already got, a, got that going, but we be trusting more in the government, trusting more in all these outside sources more than the Lord. And that, uh, that infuriates the Lord because that's rebellion and, that's disrespect to him. And that's basically what Isaiah 30 is talking about. Cause it says, you know, you walk, they, they, it says, woe to the rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. They going down to, to Egypt looking for food, looking for this, looking for protection, looking for saving versus coming to me. You looking for strength from outside sources except me. You looking for strength for people who kept you in bondage. Us as black people still looking at the white man for help and for saving and for redemption and thinking they going, you looking for them for your 40 acres in the mule. You need to be looking to me for your 40 acres in the mule because I'm the only one that can make it happen for you. You looking to the wrong person for help. The same ones that enslaved you is the same ones you think will help you out. That's what this is talking about here. We're going to have to probably, we might end up doing this in a whole nother video too. But he said, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. That's why you're going to, you're going to always be in confusion and you're going to always be put to shame by them very Egyptians, which in this sense is the ones who enslaved us because Egypt was the place of bondage. Pharaoh was the one, the master that um, placed taskmasters against them to afflict the, the children of Israel. 
We know who afflicted us in slavery. We know who afflicts us now. We know who don't want us to arise now. We know who is against us now. We know who set up the welfare systems to keep us down now. We know who did this stuff to us now. And yet we still rely on them same people who have caused so much affliction on us, who has, who has created the divide between the black man and the black woman as we seen in the Willie Lynch video in that series. The one who created this whole division against us, who who did the whole thing that they did with having us compare each other to one another and to find flaws in one another and to separate the, the house slaves versus the field slaves and to compare us to cause identity crisis amongst us so we can hate what we look like because they put that confusion between us of you got a smaller nose, you're prettier, and now the, you, you have a bigger nose so now, because they made you feel like your nose is bigger, now you don't like people with a smaller nose, or now because you're dark skin, you don't like light skin because they didn't put light skin against dark skin and brown skin and this skin and long hair versus real hair, natural hair versus this, long nails versus short. Look at how look how debatable we are in the comments. I'd be like, y'all just it just we go against each other so hard about every like comparing anything, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I choose to wear long nails and you don't. So what? If you're not eating with these fingers, like that, that, that does not play into your character. That has nothing to do with who you are. If my hair is natural and yours is permed, who cares? If if you have a gap and I don't, and if you have your you're like these comparisons that the slavery has done on us. And we still do it on each other and we're trying to find who's better than who in our own community division. God hates that about our community that we so divided, but he allows it because until you get back to him, he's going he gonna to keep you divided. Until you learn what you need to learn, he's going to keep it like that because he's not going to let you have peace when you don't believe that having peace is with him. God is a jealous God and people say he let you do all of this, all of that. God gonna let you do free will, but he gonna let your free will keep leading you into so much corruption that eventually you gonna wanna do his will because you're gonna get tired of your free will because your free will keep leading to your demise. You gonna get tired of it. That's why it's low key like manipulation because it's like, it really ain't free will. It's really not free will, you know? Um, And because like he said, like this whole thing, we probably gonna do this in a whole separate video, but I do want to finish it a little bit um but it says for the egyptians should help in vain and to no purpose therefore have i cried concerning this their strength is to just sit still they just sit there and look at you complaining and crying and asking for this they don't care about you but yeah y'all won't be like these nations so bad they don't care about you you looking for coverage from these folks they don't care about you for real like this is and he said now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. That's how I know this is us. We are a rebellious group of people. I know I'm a rebellious person. We are definitely rebellious people. That's why I say, if you want to get me, you got to go to the Lord. A lot of stuff that my baby dad tell me, I'm like, I ain't listen to you but now, but when the Lord come do it, when the Lord come get me, it's like, you really got to go to my father on me. Like, you got to go to my father on me. <laughs> but now I'm understanding but sometimes still because of my lack of trust it's like I might not understand it until you come to me so that's why instead of trying to control people pray you gotta go to God about them and God will end up convicting them God will he'll do it everything that because we spend so much time trying to control the other person trying to manipulate do little tactics to try to get this and then we exhaust ourselves because none of that's working and god ain't even gonna let none of it work he gonna let you run yourself ragged trying to do all these tactics that don't work trying to save your own relationship save your own marriages baby you got to call on the lord that's it you know and this is what he said here. Um, this video is long. Um, but it said that uh, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not to us right things. Speak to us smooth things. Prophecy deceits. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. These false prophets. We don't like truth. 
That's what it's saying. You, don't, you tell the seers not to see. Y'all only want the seers and the prophets to speak good things. That's why the church is corrupt. The church can't even really tell the people the real because their people will not come. They ain't going to get the money because the church didn't, all they care about is getting the money from the folk by itching their little ears, them little waxy, dirty ears that don't want to hear truth. You need to clean them ears out so you can hear truth, accept truth so it can penetrate through and come up to your brain. You need to come in here, penetrate, go up to your brain so it can foster out into your body and filter out so that you can really understand and marinate on what's being said to you, that truth that's being said to you and not lies that's being said to you because our people love lies. That's why I see it on the internet. I'm like, these y'all love anything that just make you feel good. Tickle your ears. Because you don't want to deal with truth. Then you wonder why you're still corrupt. Wonder why you're not moving, making no motion and like have no growth in no area of your life because you don't like truth. It says these are our lying children. This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. <laughs> And blessed is the man that hears the law of the Lord, that seeks the law of the Lord, that meditates on the law day and night. That is the that is the one that is blessed. Blessed Psalms one. That's what I was just uh, studying earlier. Psalms one. Blessed is he that not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor seat in the seat of the scornful. But in his delight. Let's go to it right quick. Get y'all a good song. Let's let's end y'all out. Let's end y'all out right. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but in his delight is the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also should not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You want to be under good counsel, not in the counsel of the ungodly. not And people that lack righteousness, that lack integrity, that lack truth, that only like things that tickle their ear and tell them what they want to hear, that produce no growth. That's the ungodly. Because God is not the, the spirit of lies. That's Satan. Satan is the father of lies. God is the spirit of truth. God is the spirit of truth. And until we start becoming true with ourselves, true with each other, true with our family, and stop covering up so much BS, stop going to places that only tell you what you want to hear, that itching, tickling is, that's why the world is corrupt. That's why churches is corrupt. That's why the nation is corrupt. And that's exactly why when Russia come blow this place up, don't be crying. Don't be crying for your family. Don't be crying when you're seeing all, all the stuff that's going on over there in Ukraine. When that stuff start happening here, don't be crying all oh, little kids, innocent kids. No, because unfortunately, kids have to suffer for the sins of their fathers because their fathers and their mothers would not get it right. Their fathers and their mothers was unrepentant because their fathers and their mothers is stubborn, rebellious people. They want to do what they want to do. And when warning comes before destruction, their parents did not take heed. When the, when the prophets were blowing the trumpets to notify you of what's coming because of your idolatry and because of your unrepentance and because of your rebellion, you're not listening. Like he says here, they say to the seers, tell us not this, prophesy not right things to us. Don't tell the right things to us, tell us lies. Speak to us smooth things, prophecy deceits like the false prophets do. All these false prophets out here that talk about money all the time. You get ready to be rich. Your, your kingdom spouse is here. False prophets. Baby, if that's all people focus on when there's so much to unpack in this world and y'all talk about all these vain things, false prophets. And there's more false prophets than real prophets. Because guess what? False prophets like to kill off the real prophets like, it, like they was doing with Jezebel and them because they don't want the truth to get out. And then a lot of times, the real prophets, we don't get seen. They, they shadow ban you. You don't get seen. You don't get the recognition. You don't, you, you don't get seen like that. And then even a lot of the real prophets, half of y'all scared to get up and speak because you're scared of what the people want to say. You're scared of not being like. You're not here to be like. You're here to speak what God told you to speak. That's it. Get out the camera, boo.
Go charge it. Fuck it up. You here to speak only with the what, what God told you to speak. It don't matter who like it, who don't. You're not here to be liked. You're here to serve. That's it. That's why I said I don't care who don't like nothing. I'm not here. I'm doing my father's will. My father whom is in heaven who called me here to do this, that's who I'm here to serve. I don't care what the government got to say. I don't care what the YouTube, the man, none of them. Because all of these high officials, guess what? They still have to, they, it's hierarchy. There's nobody that's above God. None. He sits at the throne. He sits at the throne. Then he got his seraphims and the cherubims and the all the other ones. Thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities. It's a hierarchy of this thing. Then it comes down to earthly level where you got presidents, government. They, at the, they on the earthly level. They have no true power. They have to seek the powers of these heavenly forces. Why, what we, we just read in here? But they had to go to the wise men to see what to do. The king. And my prophetic warning playlist about Russia and them. What did I? Even Putin or Putin. They go to astrologers. They go to spiritual advisors. They go to prophets. They go to these people. I, I read that to y'all in one of the videos. The spiritual advisor, um, I forgot what the name was, what his name was, but the guy that told Putin, Putin what to do, what was coming, like what to expect. He's a he's a prophet, and he told he was giving Putin the heads up. They underlined his daughter, the, that the spiritual advisor's daughter in a the car. They was actually thinking it was him. They was trying to underline him because he's helping Putin, and they don't want him to have one up they want to defeat him but they're going to get us they're going to it's and guess who about to help him mr trump himself this is when this all go down it's just gonna be crazy because guess where it was all the answers was right here the one thing that people try to say ain't true this all the facts is here all the facts is here even to how he gonna let them in the country even to how they gonna get in <laughs> <laughs> through the mountains the Appalachian mountains it's so funny when I first got that revelation like when I first got to Texas that's what I'm saying God called me to Texas on a mission this was this was a true mission a true mission I'm like oh like just it's it's just craziness but like he was saying here um it says, wherefore, that's the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay there on. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly and at an instant. And he shall break it at and he shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so that there should not be found in the bursting of it assured to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall you be saved, and quietness and confidence shall be your strength, and you would not. The only way you're going to get saved, only way you're going to get what you're looking for, it says through in returning, repentant, and turning away from your wicked ways, and turning back to the Lord your God. We're, the, on, that's the only solution for the black community. All that other hearsay that y'all talk about on the internet is riffraff. It's just chatting. It's just bumping your gums, saying nothing because they're saying nothing because you don't have a spiritual understanding of what's really going on. You don't have the space a spiritual attack. <laughs> and if you don't know how to fight spiritually, even when you're in a relationship, you got to, both parties got to know how to fight spiritually. Like, a spiritual, and that's why I say it's even an attack on me and my second BD. He always say we soulmates, and you know it is a spiritual connection. It's a very spiritual thing there, but God has to still he he gotta get him. That's why I do be praying that he get under some the, the right male leadership. He needs some rights a real a real man of God. He need to get under a real man of God leadership. A real man of God. 
to get him right. A lot of these men, they y'all got no good male leaders out here. Not real spiritual ones. They teaching you worldly ways. They not teaching you from a spiritual understanding. But that's why y'all need to get in y'all own books. Y'all need to get your own relationship with him. Y'all need to start praying, fasting, get that relationship. I talk all about how to get the relationship. That's what my book is for, is to teach you how to get that relationship, everything. I go into so much information in there. Even when it comes to uh, semen retention, celibacy, all of these things will help you foster that closeness. It helps you transmute your energy into spiritualness, into going within, into trying to truly learn your power, to try to get your power back from all these outside sources, get it back, get closer with God so he can reveal to you your power that's within you, your gifts that's within you. So that you can become, a lot of y'all men that are chosen ones, your job is to become that same leadership that our men need. Our men in our community need good male leadership. There's no good male leaders. There's none. And when he called you here to be a prophet, you're afraid to step up into your calling. When many of these little dudes out here, they need you. They hungry for some leadership. They hungry for guidance. They don't have no fathers. They need it. The, sh the flock is lost. The lost sheep of Israel were lost and we need a sh good shepherd. But the ones, it's all biblical. The ones God called here to be the good shepherds, they're, le they're leading his sheep astray. They're not leading his sheep to him. The whole goal is to come lead, to lead the sheep to him. Not for you to act like you, God. No, to lead them to him. That's why I'm always going to tell y'all, no, you got to go through, you got to go to God because baby, I can never do for you what God can do for you. I can never tell you things that God needs to tell me. I don't know. I'm not the all knowing, but God is. I cannot do that. My job is to lead you, lead you to the, fl the fountains flowing uh, of water, lead you to the water, lead you to the father. I only came, what Jesus said, he came for the lost sheep of Israel to lead them to his father. That's what, that's what we're here to do, lead you to the father. So that the father can tell you what you need to do, because he can reveal to you things that you do not know, that I don't know. I don't know everything. God knows everything. And until y'all go to God and stop wanting to go to your mama, daddy, and everybody involved in everything, they don't know nothing. The blind leading the blind. That's why everybody is in the same rabbit hole, why everybody is getting ready to get judged together. Why every, and this is why he's separating his people now. He's moving them around. But if you don't answer your call, if you don't get right, when it all go down, boo-boo, don't say you weren't warned. Don't say you weren't warned, you know, but this video long enough. Um, y'all better go read Isaiah chapter 30 because in returning and rest, shall you be saved, return, repent and stay planted there. Then you shall be saved. And in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And you will not perish. Okay. So, um, oh, look, see, we got, we might, we probably end up, end up doing this again in a whole nother video. As I said, but you said no, but we will flee because not taking that correction. Basically, we don't want to take the correction from the Lord. And sometimes I get it because I do the same thing. I be like, man, you, man. But once I humble myself, I have to humble myself and see what he really doing. And then he sent a reassurance and he let me know this and he let me know that. And then I'm like, okay, okay, okay. You know, we got to get it together on both spectrums. You got to get to know who you are, why you are that way. And the only one who's going to really tell you that is God. Only then can you truly be healed. No, that's why a lot of these people have been going to therapy for years. And I had the therapist misdiagnose these clients. Like, it's just everything. It's just wicked. It's corrupt. I see so many people that say, that they have to go, they have to go through so many therapists. They then been misdiagnosed with certain disorders. They didn't. That's why it's just like when you be real with yourself, though, you don't even need these people to tell you now. You know what you do wrong and what you don't do wrong. And you know what's up. And then when you be real, if you once you 
learn to have integrity, true honesty. You can be accountable. You can be responsible. You can see when you stop being so offended, the spirit of offense, when y'all learn, we need to rebuke the spirit of offense of off our community. Y'all so easily ready to be offended. If you offend it, it's because something and it's triggering something. It might be triggering some truth that you don't want to deal with. It might be triggering something that somebody else told you that could have been a lie. Who knows? But it's triggering something. And you need to address why. Why is that triggering you? Because if it triggers you, it's something about it. It don't necessarily mean that it's true. But where does it come from? Because somebody might have said something to you. Maybe your family members that said something to you that was similar to that, that might have been a lie. And now somebody else saying this and it's offending you because it's triggering back old memories, which that means you need to go unpack that, unpack that bitterness, unpack it. That's what you need to be praying for. Cleansing this of your heart, purification of your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. You need to go through that. You need to stop tainting yourself with, with these toxins. You know, um, child, I didn't went into a whole, a whole thing, but we have to understand you guys that it's a spiritual attack on us. It's a spiritual attack on our unions. And until we put God first, we won't prevail. We won't prevail. Okay. So. I'll see y'all in the next video. I hope y'all got something out of this. I hope y'all really go do the, the inner work. Healing is not linear and it's not a overnight process. It's ongoing. It's a lot that you really have to truly unpack. And you got to take the band-aids off these wounds and let them really air out. And let God clean you up. Let him give you new perspective. Let him give you new understanding. Because the plan was never to harm you. It was to prosper you and give you a hope in the future. Everything you've been through in your life, Jeremiah 29, 11. But I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope in the future. It's, it's not, you didn't go through those things for nothing. You need to use your pain, turn it into purpose, get, reach one, teach one. A lot of stuff y'all go through, y'all scared to speak on it, but not knowing there's so many other people going through the things too. They need help. People are crying out for help. Look at these, even your artists, and y'all listening to people's music, you don't even see that they crying out for help. Y'all seeing y'all faves, you know, online, and people crying out for help, crying out for love, crying out, they crying out through their actions, but you cannot see it because you look at it as entertainment. The black community loves entertainment more than education, which is why we are the one race that perish for lack of knowledge, for only one entertainment. Because entertainment takes you away from all the, uh, the, the pain. And it really doesn't. It actually end up leading you into more pain and more deception. Running from the truth only pushes lies. And the more you live your life a lie, the more you perish. The more you perish because the more you go further, further into sin, further, further into corruption. And that's why we at where we at. That's exactly why we are where we are. So, until the next time, you guys, I'll see y'all in the next video. I gotta go and deuces. <laughs>